today, if you can just begin to open up your mouth right where you are, the strength of the Lord is going to find you. Because you are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Come on, sing that to the Father with me. So you are my strength. Come on, in your homes, in your living rooms, tell them. Say, strength like no other. Strength like no other. It reaches to me. Come on, lift your hands right here. And in the fullness of your in the power of your name, you lift me up. Thank you, Jesus. You lift me up. Come on, say, you are my strength. Come on, say, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Finding you right now. I don't care what you are. Come on, say you are my strength. You are my strength. Receive the strength of the Lord today. Strength like no other. Oh, strength like no other. God, we thank you now. Strength like no other. Oh, we reach Come on, let's raise this together, family. Say in the fullness of your grace. Come on, say in the power of your strong name. You live. I believe he's doing it for somebody right now. Come on, open your mouth and declare it. You lift me up. Come on, in the fullness of your grace.
Bless the Lord, everyone. I'm just here going into another um, prayer session. I just like to welcome everyone. God bless all those on Instagram and Facebook. God bless the Complicated Melody. God bless you, Nick's Daily. God bless you, Hope. What? God bless you, Sakavin Period. God bless you, Glams. I hope everybody's having a blessed day. Um, I'm happy to see Tuesday, right? Today is November 8th. I wonder if our intercessors reminded us that 8th is new beginning. So as we approach November, just remember that November 8th, 8th is new beginning where God is about to do great things for us. Praise God. We're in another midday prayer. And um, I'm just here just today to encourage somebody. And just praying that everybody will continue to do what the Lord has said them to do. Um, God bless you, Angela Authority. God bless you. I see your prayer request. We're going into midday prayers. And I welcome Mal Rose, Tiffany Davis. I welcome you at this time. Okay, Angela, I see your prayer request. Yes. So I'm just here worshiping and singing. He's your strength. Sometimes you, feel you don't know how you're going to go through your day. But the Lord is your strength today. So I just want to remind somebody that he is your strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. That's what the song that I was worshiping and singing. And I pray that you are worshiping and singing. Also, baby Hannah is here with me and she's worshiping also. Still hear noise in the background. She's agreeing with me. God bless you, Shakira. God bless you, Lady V. Right. So our theme for this month is still, um, we're still on the theme, rebuilding the altars. You know, where the Lord is reminding us that it's time to build the altar so we're here just to remind somebody it's time to rebuild the altar and also our theme is also under um putting on the whole arm of god so i give god thanks for another day for tuesday this is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it god bless you sister shakir as you join in with me uh we're just on the theme yes we're just on the theme um rebuilding the altars and also um, putting on whole arm of God. But before I go through the day or before I proceed further, I'm just going to pray a uh, opening prayer and just share the live with someone. And just if anybody needs any prayer, just send your request and I will pray as I'm led. We thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for Tuesday. Lord, another day that we have seen or heard. Lord, you have taken us through this weekend at this time. The enemy tried so many times to sabotage us, Lord, but we just want to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning, our right man. You're the kings of kings. You're the Lord of lords. The blessing of the Lord make us one rich and others no sorrow. Lord, remind us, Lord Jesus, that you are the only one we can depend on. You're the only one at this time we can trust in this season at this time. You remind us for this theme, Lord. Put on the whole arm of God so we're able to withstand the fiery darts of the enemy. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. You are the only one that can work our situation for us. Somebody need a word today. Somebody need a scripture. Thank you, Lord, for the song that says, you are my strength. You are our strength this morning. Lord, some persons are at work, some are at school this morning. 
But God, I'm asking me to cover us and your blood, cover our minds, cover our body, cover our soul, cover our spirit at this time, Lord. We come against every spirit of destruction and lies and deception that rise up against the people today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the secret place of the Most High. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the owner and we can depend on, Lord, when we don't know which way to turn. You are our strength. Oh, we don't have the strength to pray. You are our strength. Oh, we don't have the strength to go to work. You are our strength. Oh, we don't have the strength to go to church. You are our strength. Lord, we don't have the strength to do our, our activities during the day, Lord. You are our strength today. And today we're seeking your face at this time because you remind us in Psalms 91 that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for life, for strength, Lord. Many of us could have dead and gone. But Lord, you have given us strength, you have given us life, you have given us, Lord Jesus, another hope at this time to see tomorrow. So many attacks on the mind, we cover our mind, we bind depression, we bind suicidal thought, cover our mental health today. God, we remind with the fire of God at this time, Lord. Lord Jesus, we can declare transformation of shift in our minds, our body and our soul at this time. Today is a good day. Today is a day where miracles can manifest, healing can take place at this time. Today you can shift in somebody's situation at this time, Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, uplift somebody's faith that has been trampled down at this time. Pull up our faith today. Somebody will feel like giving up on their goals and their dreams and their journey. Give them the strength that they need today at this time, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for release and breakthrough. We thank you, Lord, for healing our bodies and our soul at this time. Any person that feels sick on this land, Lord, touch them. Anybody who feels distressed at this time, uplift their burden today. Anybody who feels confused, Lord, give them clarity at this time in this watch. I thank you, Lord, for the peace that passes all understanding in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Thank you all for joining in. Praise God. I see Nikisa daily. Yes, I'm going to um, take note of your request. Yes, I'm going to pray for you, Nikisa. I'm going to pray for you, Angela. We thank you, Lord, for Angela at this time, Lord. She needs financial breakthrough, deliverance from sickness, Lord. We have been praying, Lord Jesus, for a financial breakthrough. Whatever distress or generational curse that the enemy set up against your servant today, we shut it down at this time. Would you kind of care a release of breakthrough for your servant, Lord? Any other person that have financial issue, financial difficulty, depths on every side at this time, Lord. There are so many blockage at this time because of the adversary of hell. The gates of hell will not prevail against their finances. Would you kind of care that the economy of heaven will step down in their account at this time? Many of us at this time, Lord, who are struggling, don't know which way to turn. Touch them. Those who have any job, who need a better job, who need promotion, having fight in the in the work system, Lord, send help to them right now. Increase our salary right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for touching our tithes and our offering, O Lord Jesus. Breathe upon our sacrifice today. Breathe upon our sacrifice, Lord. Breathe upon, O Lord Jesus, the meditation of your words at this time, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the manifestation of your kingdom. Remember, even at this time, Lord, Nikisa daily, she's asking for strength as we have been singing the song, You Are Our Strength. Lord Jesus, we never make it on our own. We never wake up by ourselves, Lord. We cannot do anything without you. We come on strength at this time for Nikisa daily. In the name of Jesus, she needs your strength. Cover in their blood, cover our mind. If we do our mind, we worship you. And that's why the enemy attack our mind. But God, I'm asking my God, the minds of our women or our men, Lord, our children, Lord, our parents at this time, intercessors, pastors, leaders, cover the mind today. Lord Jesus, sit in the mind of your people at this time. Any evil thoughts at this time that go against your thoughts today will come against it. Any spiritual wickedness in our places that were sent to sabotage our mind today will come against it today in the name of Jesus. Shift our atmosphere anywhere we are, at home, at school, at work, on the job, on the street at this time. Shift our atmosphere at this time. We just want to say thank you for the breakthrough in Jesus' name. Just receive your healing, Sister Angela. If you have your olive oil, I have anointed myself already. Anoint yourself and just agree in prayers and just uplift your faith today and I pray strength to you in Jesus' name. Sister Nikisa, will you can take your coverage over our mind in Jesus' name. Praise God. We just like to Encourage somebody from Ephesians chapter 6. And everybody know Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to verse 17. That's where our focus is on. The Lord wants us to put on the whole arm of God. He just reminding us it's time to rebuild the altar, the altar that has been shown down. He wants us to have a great relationship with him. He wants us to have a deeper relationship with him. He's calling us to a deeper relationship with him. He's calling us to holiness. He's calling us to righteousness. He's calling us to put on the whole armor of God. He's calling us to understand more about him. So that's why we're here today, to pray for somebody who feels discouraged. Many times we don't, when we come on the line, sometimes we don't have the strength to pray. Now. It's when we tap into the presence of the Lord and the Lord say, 
you know, pray on this. Because we don't know what to pray for. But the Holy Ghost may get intercession with groaning, which cannot be uttered. So we give God thanks for the Holy Ghost because whenever the Holy Ghost, some of us wouldn't be praying. Some of us would be sleeping or watching TV or gone out with friends. But God give us the mandate just to, to encourage somebody and pray for somebody. Hallelujah. Um, God bless you, Sir Shakir. Um, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 17. And if you all have found it, just type in the chat, Amen. Type in the chat, amen, if you're at um, Ephesians chapter 6. So I'm just going to give an encouraging word. That's Ephesians chapter 6. If you are not able to do so, I will read in your hearing. So Ephesians chapter 10 states, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watch thereunto with all persever perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may know the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that wherein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So I just read from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to verse 18. Right. So I'm just here to encourage someone. It's time to put on the whole armor of God. If Sister Shaki would like to share something, you can notify me if you'd like to share something with the scripture. If anybody wants to type in the inbox, if you can't say anything, you can just type in the inbox anything that you have gathered from Ephesians chapter 6. So this is a common scripture. This is a common um, scripture that you hear every day. Oh, put on the whole armor of God. But the Lord is calling us to put on the whole armor of God because we have recognized that we have been facing many challenges and issues in our schools, in our homes, in our family, in our personal life, you know, so many things are happening that we realize that we can't fight these battles by ourselves, but we have to depend on the Holy Ghost and depend upon the leading of the Spirit to do what we're sent to do. So here the scripture is reminding us that finally, my virgin, be strong in the Lord. How can be how can we be strong when sometimes we feel weak? How can we be strong when we feel like giving up? How can we be strong when we feel so depressed? And sometimes we feel stressed out, you know, we feel like we can't make it, we feel like we can't continue. But the song says this morning, you are my strength, strength like no other. Hallelujah. Just so you need the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit can give you the strength that you need and to go, um, to go on with the journey. It says also, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities that principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in our places so here the scripture is reminding us to put on the whole armor of god i always say when i come on have you ever seen a soldier go to war without him putting on his different um attire meant to go for war he have never left his equipment never left his gun never um this the chain of command they you know they do everything in order they don't wait until the war to prepare themselves. Every day they're on training. Every day they are um, preparing their guns. Every day they are, you know, ironing their suits, you know, putting their stuff together, going on training. So I realized just as in the physical, it's the same thing with the spiritual. You have to prepare yourself for war. The enemy now going to tell you, Sister Shakir, I come five o'clock and attack you. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm just a launching attack, you know, business. You know, like we. So we, we that's why we as intercessors, we always have come on. And, you know, we we'll go as we we'll led. Sometimes we we'll come on, we don't know what to say. But we'll listen to what the Holy Ghost say and just go as the Holy Ghost tells us to speak. Sometimes the Holy Ghost say, go upon two days of fasting when you're under what? And you say, no, sir. And you, you take up your KFC and your chicken and you want to eat that. But the Holy Ghost say, go upon fasting. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost pick up something. You can't see it physically, you know, but the Holy Ghost pick it up 
and say, I need to go on a day of prayer and fasting because something's about to happen. Some destruction will come. Something bad will happen. But when you are obedient to the word of God, you go on the fasting and the Lord shows you, my God, that the devil ever sent for me. Yeah, I go down in a prayer and fasting, I read the word. And sometimes when some things come and uh, uh, come against you, sometimes you just need one person to agree. Somebody who you trust and say, you know, this is a situation that happened, you know, pray for me. You know, say so I go through this, I pray. Because you know, so there's power in the word. There's power in the anointing. There's power in agreement. There's power with the Holy Ghost. So in this season, you have to be obedient. The enemy longs to attack morning, night or noon. Him attack, him saying he attacks any time. So you have to prepare yourself and listen to what God is saying. You know, should I go on fasting? How long? Should I go in prayer? You know, what should I pray for? Lord, I need your direction because we cannot make it on our own. So it is very important to prepare yourself for battle just like how soldiers do in the physical. Teachers prepare students to go for the exam. If you don't know your content, you may not know the topic then, you can't do your exam. It's just with the academic. When the teacher give you an outline, say you must study this and that. And if you don't study it, you'll get zero. And you can't go past and move on to the next level. Same with the natural, so with the physical. So with the spirit, so with the physical. Um, anything you like to say, Sister Shakira? Anything you like to add? Bless the Lord. Blessings. Yeah, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Can you hear me, right? Yeah, may I hear you loud and clear. Yes. Yeah, I'm just agreeing with you in the spirit, you know, agreeing with what you're saying. Even as you spoke about rebuilding the altar, which is the theme, you know, for the last three months in prayer, you know, thing that had Bishop Oakton presenting was that prayer for battle. Yes. And as you said, you don't want the enemy to have waiting for you. And just like, you know, the soldiers, the train, you know, every they train every day because they do also what I think is peace and safety, destruction. Yeah. You know, and if you're not prepared, you know, you can be caught off guard, sure. you know, and you can be devoured by the enemy. And you know, I remember when they were talking, I was remember an experience I had when I was working at a particular company. When I was going through a lot, you know, I don't think I, my prayer life was that you're and I remember going to work and I just a few of people just drop a groan like we could have fucked in a work like I just all about the business of work one me. Yes. Like, yes. This is not me. Like, this is not me. Yes. And I remember I had to go into the bathroom, my sister Leota, and I had to say no. I said the devil is a liar. I'm liar. Start. What if I'm a God? I put on the old arm of God. No, took me from the corner of my head to the sole of my mm -hmm. feet. Put on my breastplate like I was literally yeah. praying and putting on different parts of the armor on my body and everything. Yeah. And when I went back into the office, it was a different Shakira. I went there in boldness. I went there in confidence. But I jump off on a chair and I act like I'm nervy, nervy. Come here, this is not me. Yeah. The armor of God is so, 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 so much important. Yeah. You know, because, like, you know, you pray and, you, as I say, the fasting, even that when they were talking about the fasting thing, you know, you have some day when God say fasting, you know, prepare for the fast, you know. Yeah. When God say fasting, and you have to be obedient because I remember, you know, um, the Lord spoke to me some years ago about this fasting thing. I was going through something and the Lord said, go on three days fasting. I remember I apologized to the Lord. I said, Lord, I can't go fasting today, but I'll go the next day. And I kept my word and I go the next day. And later, when I came off that, it happened to me. And if I did not want those fasting, I would have had the strength yes. to have overcome that. It was really drastic. I did not know that that was what the Lord knew because he yes. knew everything. Yes. He and he prepared everything. me, you know, with that three-day fasting. I suppose, as what happened to me should have killed me. Yes. But the fasting really strengthened me and it prepared me for the battle that was ahead. So it is so important for us to have a good health in our life. Always praying, always covering ourselves because we don't know. Some days are peaceful, some days are nice, but then the enemy does, as I said, we think it's peace and safety, some destruction, mm -hmm. you don't yeah. know when the enemy does say attack, you yeah. might launch attack. So we have to fear ourselves. Yeah. And as persons who have known about the incident even at Mobile in high school. Yes. 
communication and evil parents with their children. Yes, yes. Remember, I would call, um, one in time before, would give the old ship crooked away. At night time, when we are sleeping, put olive oil on our head. And I never heard about these things happening before. In yes. those times when parents used to pray, even if parents don't go to church, them children going to church, people from the school and they know the word. And, you know, Cooper, but it's like so many things are just launched in the hurt right now. It's all about social media, it's all about pictures, it's all about TikTok, it's all about those stuff. And I think people have lost the the essence of praying. Yeah. They have lost the essence of praying, you know, covering children. You know, the, the Bible said the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking, seeking who he may devour. You know, it's so far let the children to come unto me and forbid them not, for as such is the kingdom of God. Yes, it's a, it's a, there's an attack against children yeah. because children are vulnerable. And I don't yes. think parents are grooming. Parents, to me, are picking around the house now. And what is like everything gone back, backward? So true. I know when I saw that, I was like, you know, the covering of children in those days, almost every parent can testify yeah. about, you know, anointing their children, growing them up in Sunday school having devotions in the morning. It was something that we always cure. My mother always had devotion in the yeah. morning with us as, as parent and, and well, child. Yes. Yes, even when you were going to school, the pastor would call it um, September morning, the Sunday before September, and pray and cover. I don't know if these things are still put into place, yeah. but we are not being prepared for battle under this is We are not being prepared. Look for soldier. That's what I said. What soldier do? <laughs> and them just always them, they, them close with the gun and nothing now go on. Yeah. But then when this thing, when when the big war come, they yeah. are well prepared. They are well prepared. So even though it's not, not, not happen every day, every day, every day, every day, they're still training because they know that at any time, yes. at any minute, something big can happen. Yes. So they're not caught off guard. They yes. are ready, ready, ready waiting, armed and dangerous. Oh, we, oh, we not now go on, they have been gone. I would not now go on there and have one bomb in a truck because anything can happen. So as Christian, I think we need to, you know, get back to that place where we even cut something in the air. Hello? I guess your signal is going in and out. God bless you, everyone. Thanks for joining in. We're on the topic, put on the whole armor of God. That's our theme for this month. Ephesians chapter 6. God bless you, Kenika Ferguson. God bless you, Kali Ellis. God bless you, Kristan. God bless you, Nikki Daly. God bless you all for joining in. Marsha, Marsha Segri, thanks for joining in. Thank you so much for your input, Sister Shakir Duncan. God bless you, Seti Will. God bless you, Singer J. She was just encouraging us on Ephesians chapter 6 that it's time for us to put on the whole armor of God. Are we ready for battle? Are we ready for any attacks that the enemy will send out? How do we prepare for battle? What do you do to um, protect yourself from the, the plots of the enemy? So we're here discussing on Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. There's no specific um day that the, the devil is saying that, oh, so Shakir, I'm going to come four o'clock in the morning six o'clock in the morning the devil not give no signal saying i'm gonna do this right he move like a snake he moves subtle so how do you pick up these devices and when these stuff are coming up it says you have to put on the whole armor of god so the wilds of the devil means that the enemy wild you know him will do anything him will do anything to stop the people of god hallelujah anybody that is led to come on you can come on also and just talk on this topic um, Ephesians chapter 6. Anything you like to say about Ephesians chapter 6 from 10 to 21, you can type in the inbox also. Any encouraging word? Anything you like anybody to say? Okay, you're back now, Sister Shakira. Go ahead. Oh, because you got cut off. Got cut off. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6 okay. from 10 to 18. We welcome everyone. We're on the topic put on the whole armor of God. Go ahead. Yes, you were saying that like some children, um, back in the days, you know, so when we go to school, we pass our call we out and a night when pray for you before we go into the new school year. You know, parents always have um parents always have devotion with us. Even them busy, then try to have devotion with us. So that's what we're discussing. Go ahead. You hearing me? 
I guess your signal is in and out, but I'm seeing you clearly. Can anybody agree in your younger stage, in back in the days, the parents always have devotion with you? You know, when you know so school um, is a new school year, you know, parents are saying to go, go, um, go to church and they anoint you and pray for you for the new school year. All right, it seems like something's wrong with Sister um, Shakira's signal. So we understand what you're saying, Sister Shakira. She remember back in the days, you know, when even parents not going to church, they send them children go Sunday school or Sabbath school. Yes, I realize that something's up with the internet. You can type in the chat. I understand what you're saying. You know, parents will send their children to get prayer for go to school. You know, parents will have devotion with their children, even if they're Christian or non-Christian, where they make your children be aware that there's a God, there's somebody that you have to know about that is protecting you. There's a highest um supernatural being that protects you when you go to school and come back helps you with schoolwork so we're talking about the whole armor of god so it says we rest not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rules of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in our places so what the scripture is telling us that what is happening in a school workplace and whatever negativity is happening in your generational lineage it is not just a physical battle it's not some some situation can just, you know, you can't hit it hands on, but you have to use the power of the Holy Ghost, the word, fasting and prayer. Because I said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not something you have to lick down, box down, kick down, and it's, some, and it's something you have to cuss off. Because the more you cuss, you get worse. The more you, um, you use your emotions and your physical energy to fight these cases that is not um, physical, you're just going to get in more trouble. So you need to prepare yourself like like the soldiers, like the policemen, like the um yes, Kanika, I agree. Back in the days, she observed prayer, prayer is done in Sunday school and not the general service. Yes, in a Sunday school, yeah. I first thing you do, if you're the first one to come to Sunday school, Sunday school teacher make you pray. If you come late, remember, like sometimes we come late, you are the last person to go close out in prayer. Yes. So prayer was 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 um it was it was placed in our spirit from a child that you know even if you're not a part of the church you know you know so you, when you go to church you pray you know that at school devotion is important you know teacher i got have devotion before she teach so all of us as children knew that something there was something about prayer before you eat your food you're gonna learn your grace before you eat your food mommy and daddy not make you eat until you bless your food Right when you're at school, and when we're the primary school and even infant school, we always say, Um, what the girls do again? God is good, God is great. Let us thank Him for our food, amen. For our health and strength, and someone other for each you day. Thank you, Lord. And and you bless your food before you eat it. So prayer was it was was placed in us from we were a child, you know. And this is what has been carrying us through. Even if many of us didn't continue going to church, or many of us never like grow to be a big prayer warrior, you know, not everybody's going to be a big prayer warrior, not everybody's going to be this big intercessor, but you knew that prayer was important. And that's what Sister Shakira was tracking back, that prayer was important. And she said, and in the scripture, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places so the scripture is telling us that there is spiritual wickedness in high places there are principalities that are operating against the people of god there are powers that go against god it is telling us that there are rulers of darkness so the, what is that telling you that there is evil and there is good and from we're small we know evil from good so when we present to us, we know, so you know, so that's not right. So sometimes we don't um let down our integrity when we're in school or, you know, we're at church because we knew good from bad, from we young, right? So as we grow more in Christ, we know that there are some evil works that's happening against people of God. But we cannot wrestle against these evil categories, forces that have been placed in Ephesians. We don't wrestle against it with flesh and blood. We wrestle against it through fasting, prayer, word, you know, worship, anything that is positive go against the evil works of darkness and it says wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand against the evil day and have having done all to stand so what i show is the evil day can come anytime evil day and I have evil day and i just celebrate on halloween day or evil day not just one day evil day operate anytime right now with the pan in line evil forces are planned against me right now with the pan in line 
people are plot evil stuff against people. You know why? It is not them doing it. No, there are spirits operating behind them to go against the people of God. So when people don't like you, it's not them. It's a the spirit behind them. When people are saying obey their witchcraft and their sorcerer, it's not them. It's a the spirit operating behind them to disturb the peace of God. When people do your bad and say, what this a person do my bad? What this a person send their curse for me, picking them? I know them. There's an evil force operating behind them and using them against you. So that's why it says we don't rest against flesh and blood. So we don't hate the person that is doing it against you. We don't hate them. It doesn't, it, we don't fight by emotions. All we do is fight on our knees and listen to the instruction of God and pray against the spirit operating behind the person. And when they start going on your knee, because that, that's somebody has sent against me. You go up on your knee in prayer and fasting. You build your altar. That's why from the past three months, I've been saying it's time to rebuild your altar, the altar that has been broken. The reason why the demons and the principalities and the powers and rules of darkness can't have party in our life and laugh after we and invade with family and invade with marriage and invade with church and become on an altar. It's time for you to build your altar, recreate your altar, and God will show you the demons that were attacking you. And some people smile in their face and grin. Ah, I smile. But when the Holy Ghost show you that smile is not genuine, you can look beyond that person and say, that spirit of Jezebel behind you, shut it down. That spirit of malice that operates behind you, shut it down. That demons are that spirit of jealousy, I shut it down, that operates behind the person. That spirit of bad mind, I shut it down in the name of you. You can call the thing as it is at the altar and not be afraid because we don't operate by fear, we operate by faith, right? And it says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So it's sure you, so you can't have on peace and left one another armor. You can't have the breastplate of righteousness and don't have the, the, um, the, the helmet of salvation. You can't have one piece and have the other. You ever see when soldiers go to war? Them have all of them. Them have everything together. Them can't go to war. If one is missing, that's it. The enemy have a loophole. Them enemies have a loophole. So that's why the scripture tells us that put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand. So that means that you can't have a resistance. The enemy can't always send the attack. He can't always do what he wants to do. But if you don't have that stamina that strength of god to stand against the enemy true fasting and prayer and the word and being at the altar and saying that jesus feet they are gonna have a losing buckle because sometimes we we'll go out there we're not, we're not ready for fight them buckles that they will, will come up against us we're not prepared we're not have no armor we don't have no shield of faith we don't have righteousness we don't even know how to pray we don't even know how to fast how you go fast, fast, and um, fight against spiritual wickedness in their places when you do not what God tell you. You don't have a prayer life, you don't have an altar, you don't have a fasting life, you don't want to go to church, you don't want, even if you don't go to church, you don't, you don't know nothing about God. You don't have no personal relationship with God. Don't tell you praise when something is happening, like when, when you want something from God, at the time you pray. God don't want that, God wants to have a relationship with you. God wants to tell you things, he wants to reveal the mystery of the gospel to you. You think I just you just want you to baptize and fill the Holy Ghost and you look nice and look pretty? No, you know, that's why you be a pretty Christian. He wants you to be a son of God. He wants you to be a warrior. He wants you to be an intercessor. He wants you to be a kingdom ambassador that God can depend. I can depend on Christine to fight my buckles. I can depend on Christine to have faith in me. I can depend on comes, comes the James to, 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 to trust in me because every situation that come up, he's going to get the glory. We never seen a scripture when somebody put God first them never lose a buckle of the scripture you see once they put god aside and do it their own self them lose the battle anybody will lose buckle yes jesus is not a sugar daddy <laughs> i'm always i said that god is not a sugar daddy only when you want something from god at that time you go to him you can't treat god like that and expect for win big buckle and expect god for use if he heal the dead for him to heal the sick and raise the dead god can't use it for do those stuff because you don't have a relationship with god um Yes, Sister Shakira, your parents were in control once. No, 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 anything is anything. That's true. Um, Sister Christine, thanks for your input. Parents weren't Christian, but Sunday school was a must. They would take us and return home. And if we went home before service was over, we had to go back and stay until service was dismissed. Yes, that, that was the type of discipline that we had back in the days. Um, yes, says, not sure why as not all children are captured at Sunday school. So some will miss the prayer. That's so right, Kanika Ferguson. That's so right. That's so right. Thank you for your input. Yes, there's something about prayer that is instilled in us from a child. And even if parents were not saved, they ensure us that them picking to go to Sunday school or Sabbath school because they want their child to have a knowledge of who God is. So I give God thanks for the parents. And I believe that now as young people, we have identified that 
this type of um this type of action is not being reinforced in our generation we the generation have to do it with our children we the generation have to do it with our niece and our neighbors we have to take up the mantle and pray for the parents to get back to the altar you know to get back to that tradition of prayer that the culture of the prayer life is very important and also it says put on the old armor of god so we can withstand so sure so you can't stand on your own and having done all to stand so we'll have to stand against these principles and power we can't we can't as a christian as a son of god you can't be fearful you can't be a chicken you can't be you have to be an eagle when you're a son of god being a christian is not a play play thing it's not something to be toyed with being a christian is serious being a son of god is serious being a warrior you have to be strong it says Stand therefore, having your lines girt with truth. So you have to have truth. If you're not truthful, God can't deal with it. Because you don't know where you're going to train. On the first day, on the first day we prayed, Daniel said, from the first day he prayed, the prayer was answered. Many of us prayed some prayers and there was some warfare in the heavens that blocked it. And you have to stand with your lines girt with truth. If you're not truthful, God can't help you. God know what you do long time. He knows say you sin. He knows say you're down the road. I do that and it wrong. God don't know what, what we do before we go to him. Because why? He created the heavens and the earth. He knew us before time began. So he just want us, want us to tell him straight up. And when in our um, closet prayer, that would be our altar. Just tell God, say, God, may I struggle with this. May I ask for your help. can't do it. God, we can't take the six sister there. May I help if you? Help me to overcome. God, me can't stop teeth. God, me try, for, <laughs> try God to help me to stop. My weakness is not your weakness. God want to be straight up and upfront, or he can't help you. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, you have to have righteousness. Righteousness, purity, holiness, everything come together. You have to be righteous. You have to be holy in the presence of the Lord. You cannot enter in his presence in any, any way. And even if you have sinned, ask him to forgive you because God is ready to forgive you. He's not going to push your side him always ready you know because you know why it don't pay for already in down the cross for our sins so we could be here today if we never did for some of we, we don't know what we wanna do but he died on the cross free for god so love that he gave he was willing to sacrifice himself for us so we could have salvation for adam and eve sin so we have to be truthful and your feet shall do the preparation of the gospel of peace as we say, you can't be a warm and be a Christian. Everywhere you go, you cause destruction in everybody's yard. You just walk up and down and get peer trouble at your workplace. You get peer trouble at your school. You just walk up and down and get peer trouble. And you're a son of God. And you say you're a Christian. And everywhere you walk, you got trouble. No, no, no. You have to be peaceful as a Christian. Yeah, you say you're a Christian. Um, you say you're a son of God. You represent God. God will be embarrassed with some of us the way we get trouble from east, west, north, and south. But it is telling us that we should um and your feet should be shut in the preparation of the gospel of peace anyway god there must be peace peace must prevail if you are a so-called son of god right anywhere you walk people must feel the presence of the lord any place any territory stepping up across the globe they must know say yeah hey, a son of god there yeah a child of god come step in at his workplace yes your feet should be shut in the preparation of peace nobody shouldn't have stressed out and say lord god shakira come now lord god leota come now Lord God, um, Pam, come now, right? Them stress out for this year, they, they can't stand it. They just feel burdened, no. When you, as a son of God, step into a territory and supposed to smile and feel the glory of God and feel the presence of the Lord off you, it says you should, um, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You must be peaceful as a son of God. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked. So faith is going to help you to quench the fairy dust of the wicked. So important faith is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They might not see it yet, but prayer on the other side is opening the door. Sister Alicia always tells us at a prayer alert that um, you might be praying and see God face for certain things and you don't see it physically, but if you get a glimpse in the spiritual realm, the prayer is answered. So how are you able to quench the fairy dust of the wicked? Faith. Faith can move mountain. Your faith can be small as a mustard seed. God accept your faith. There are so many persons in the scriptures and in the Bible that manifest their blessing came through faith. They don't know how it ever come to you. Know? I can remember um Elijah. 
telling the woman to bake me a cake. The woman is like, oh, I'm to the, oh, I'm to the profiteer. And I say, I have nothing. I have nothing. The last meal I'm going to eat for me, I'm a son. I'm a done. I'm out. And my, we're going to just go and just dead. But something in her tell her, say, you know, say, so is a true man of God. And she go bake the cake for the man of God. And because of her obedience and because of her faith, the man said, go and get barrels of, um, go get barrels from all over. And she went and get them. And he said, pour the oil. And by faith, when she poured the oil, the oil multiply. So what did that fit? And there are so many other Bible characters in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, because in faith, they were made whole. The woman with the issue of blood, all she did was just touch the M of Jesus' garment. She couldn't even, she never have the strength to touch him. And just the M she touched her, and she was made whole. That's a powerful faith. So the same faith God wants for us. And he wants us to sacrifice. What is that we're sacrificing so God can get the glory out of our situation? You know, that's what the Lord wants from us. True sacrifice. He sacrificed and died the cross for our sins. You know? That's why we're here. So he want, um, not saying he might, he might bargain with you, but he wants us to sacrifice so he can get the glory out of our situation. So what is it that is blocking you from moving to the next level of God? What is it that is blocking you from having more faith? Because in the scripture it says, faith the substance of things so far, the evidence of things not seen. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith. So you have to have your shield. Your shield represents faith. Soldiers don't go pound buckle without having their full armor. Which armor when I have today? I have to check myself too. Which armor do you have today? Which armor when I have? Check yourself today. Faith, which you shall be able to quench all the fairy dots of the wicked. So as sure as the fairy dots are shut right now. Online, we're here online. The enemy has sent out everything against us. But what? We race not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in our places. So here the scripture is telling us that we have to have the shield of faith wherewith we shall be able to quench the fairy dots of the wicked. And now 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. So your head must be covered. Is ever in this time I'm getting prayer requests about suicide and depression is no. I'm getting so many requests about suicide. I'm getting so many requests about people depressed and stressed out and want to kill themselves. It's showing that the enemy is using these different devices against the minds of the people. He's using the spirit of suicide to sabotage people, both in the church world and in the world. So don't think so because people in the church, people don't have mental attack. People have attack with their mind. It would mind your worship, God, you know, that's how the enemy attack with the, our minds. Because I know, say, if, if it was the man we worship, it would the mind we push yourself forward. When our mind is seated in the presence of the Lord, no demons or no devil can attack us. So you know what? He send negative words against us. He in send what people say. He use disappointment for trap us. He use, um, use finances for block us. So you can't do it. He use lo you losing your job. Say so it, your world don't know. Um, people going to relationship issues, being hurt emotionally, physically, verbal abuse, physical abuse, domestic violence, um, people getting raped, people getting molested, people getting hurt in the church, people getting hurt in the world, people getting death threats. There are so many devices the enemy set it up against the mind. Family dispute, family dis um, disruption, marital issue, singles getting hurt, left, right, and center. And these are the stuff the enemy use for our minds to be submerge from the word of God. I'm just take our mind. So when you take our mind, we don't know who we are. We start operate like fools. We start um you will start think all kind of negative thought because we open a portal to the enemy. And that him want, but the devil is a lie. Anybody who feels depressed or distressed on this land and they can look at your mind will come back to the truth of God. Your mind will be risen up. And not everybody understand. They must say, oh, you can't depress over that thing. No, you depress over it because not everybody can take certain things. Everybody's mind is different. Everybody, everybody um, takes situation different. You understand me? Not because you go through that, the other sister can go, th go through that. Not because that brother go through that means that the other one can go through it. No. Everybody is different. So we we'll have to cover our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, sorry, Kissa Kristen. Kristen Lewis says, that is it, you know. We fail to understand that our sins are already paid for. So we walk around as liars, pretending and carrying baggages. So true. That's why we're here saying to rebuild your altar that has been broken. When you leave things at the altar, don't take it up back. Yes. We welcome everyone. We welcome general pursuing. Thirsty, we welcome Deidrean. God bless you, brother Deidrean. God bless you, Christy Faithful. Any input you have, you can type in the inbox. We're going to pray. We're here on the topic, put on the whole armor of God. It says also, 
So here we are saying you have to have the helmet of salvation. So you need a helmet when you're going for battle. Soldiers don't go to battle without their head being covered. You understand me? Because they know so when the bullet fly, when fighting or go on, some people love to go after the head. The enemy love to go after your head. So you have to guard your, your mind with the word of God. It says also, and the sword of the spirit. Right? The word, which is, um, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So the word of God is important. Sometimes, sometimes when this is certain stuff happening, you have to decree the word of God. Mr. God, your word said this. I may decree that the atmosphere, devils are sending lies from every side, but may I depend upon God's word. When the enemy sends his lies, they use the word against him and cut him with the sword, with the word. He says, Lord, um, be still and know that I am God. He says, Lord, he that dwells in the secret place of the most, I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Use the word against God. I said, the enemy fight us to read the word. We can't read other novels. We can't read other frictional books. We can't read other love stories and other articles, every gossip um, articles. We can't focus on watching movies, you know, illicit movies and so on. And, you know, feel distracted. We, do, we watch cartoons. We, we play video games. And it does it, it, we don't stop. But when it comes to the word of God, it's like it's hard for us young people to read it. And it happened with me too. Sometimes I took up like another book and I read it. And I just like, got you, I got you. I took up the Bible. It's like, I fight to read the Bible. And I'm like, why we can't focus? You know why? Because the word is like a sword against the enemy. So we just struck if we read the word. Oh, the word boring. Um, can't bother. We don't understand when the Bible. Come on, we'll have KGV Bible, the interpretation. We'll have King, New um, American Virgin. We have all different type of versions that can interpret what you don't understand. We'll have Google. We'll have YouTube. You have so many things can bring light to the scriptures. You have different um Bible stories. They have different um kingdom movies that are coming out right now for you to be able to understand what is happening in the scriptures. There are so many things. We can put our Bible up on, make it play in our ears and listen to it and so on. Find excited stuff for you to want to love the word of God. Back in the days, you never really have all of these categories of stuff. You just have to just go to Sunday school, take the word, write it down, anything you learn, that's it. And you want to draw your character, to you bring life to it. But there are many devices and there are many technological directions that you can take to enlighten you to read the word of God. You need the word of God. Jesus, when Jesus went on 40 days of fasting, in up on the last day fasting, you know, when you want to break a fasting after you're done, go up on high. The devil can show up himself and say, why don't you bow down and worship me? Let this cast this um, stone and turn it into bread. You know what the Lord used? It is written. Don't argue with the enemy. Don't have no chat with him because you're not going to carry you going nowhere. Don't waste the time arguing with the enemy. And you know when spirits operating behind people when they want to draw you out. You know when you go up on fasting or you go up on praying, you get the word and you get everything. You say, God, me get in my spirit. Then the enemy show up himself and draw you out. And you're like, oh God, forgive me, Lord. It happened to me. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. But just get a word and the enemy content me. You think so because you go up on some days of fasting and you feel the fire of God, the enemy not show up himself. At that time, I go show up himself. But you have to use the word of God and shut him down. Be silenced. Be quiet. You have to use the Holy Ghost against the enemy because the, the devil is no shot. You know, man, you no shot pants and no knife in a hand. No people pieces back in the days. No, the devil is intelligent in there before me and you. He was here a long time, so he's very intelligent. He knows everything. That's why we have to use the put on the whole arm of God. That's why I have to use the word of God, the Holy Ghost, anything of God to go against the enemy. You can't use yourself against the enemy. He will, he will done you. He will shut you down. He will wipe you out of, of this world. But if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, if you stay at the feet of Jesus, if you stay at your altar, if you keep on fasting and praying and reading the word of God and trusting the Lord, he will fight your battles. Further down, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So here it is encouraging us, and that's what I'm doing right now. That's why the Lord has placed in my spirit um, for the past, from I graduated from Northern Caribbean University in 2014, being active in UCAM, the Lord placed this ministry in me, prayer alert ministry. Many times I feel like I was going to continue in this ministry. Many times I don't feel like praying. Many times I'm just saying, you know, somebody done with prayer alert, you know, you know, somebody else can take over. But no, the Lord placed it in my spirit to carry out this mandate to empower young people, empower myself, to empower families about prayer. 
There are many times we have our plans laid out how we want it, but God have a better plan. God had a better plan for me, and he knows why I'm here today. Empowering all of us to put an old arm of God and strengthen somebody's prayer life and strengthen somebody, somebody that you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. God take me from so many stuff. I used to be buckled with depression too when I um, before I went to NCU. Enemy try to kill me many times. Enemy sent so much attacks against me. He wanted to kill me at the age of 18. I should have been dead and gone, eating out of garbage bin. I should have been, you know, not getting better. I remember back in the days, my mom used to, yes, I used to go to counselors, to psychiatrists. I couldn't get better. Not until I understand spiritual warfare and knew about prayer. That's how I overcome my mental attacks. Tablets couldn't help me. Psychiatrists couldn't help me. It was Jesus that helped me through my attacks. Many times I've been attacked by witches, warlocks, sorcerers, obey man, sorcerer, all kind of sitting there set up against me to kill me. Many times they ask a project to wall to kill me. I may never understand nothing about spiritual warfare. So I may never just dare just come on to because I'm loved up on Facebook or Instagram. No. The Lord placed it in my spirit to show persons that you can make it, to show persons that it's through your prayer and your fast and your sacrifice, you will fight your battles. Many times I thought I'll be dead already. You understand? It's just the mercy of God to keep me. I mean, it's a holy part of the person who have a story, who want to overcome. Many persons have many stories. Um, when the enemy tried to kill them, he protected them from accident, from people who were not my true friends and God revealed my true friends. You know, God can expose enemies when you stay in the presence of the Lord. He can preserve your mind. You know, when I was in college, I didn't do it by myself. God helped me because I couldn't focus because I was still seeing the psychiatrist. I was still going, I was still struggling mentally. And most of my exams is the Holy Ghost helped me. I give God for university college and apostolic ministry. That's how I understand more about fighting for you, um, going into buckles and going and fasting and prayer to pass my exam. Many times I'm going to study. Whenever you come as who help me and pray and war, I want to pass that exam. But that course code that I couldn't understand, the Lord helped me. Many times I fail maths. I don't know why I can't fail maths because why? It is deeper than what you think. Not everybody is happy for your child, seeing your child being progressful. Some things are deeper than what you think. You understand me? Sometimes I wonder why your why picnic can be successful every time they try and get cut down because some obby walk around at the corner cut down your picnic. So that's why I said, don't take prayer lightly. Don't take fasting lightly. Some things God are going to show you and say, that this mother is standing upon your picnic. You have to go in a battle and fight for your child and fight for your integrity and fight for your family. You think certain things happen in your family and in your marriage are just so? No, it's deeper than that. You have to get deep in this season. So I'm going to dare for just to become love, come on and show myself and pray. But dare for your soul. Be there for pull off somebody. Be there for bring up somebody and show them that he can help you. He can help you to your distress. He can help you and, and help you to fight your back. You might be struggling your mind mentally, but God can help you and can preserve your mind. You have to hide and guard yourself with the fire of God. You have to guard yourself in the sun. You have to hide yourself at the altar. If I never hide myself at the altar, I'm dead already. If I never have parents for support, I'm dead already. If never have family for understand, for encourage, I'm not gone and dead. I wouldn't be here today. We rest not against flesh and blood, but against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness and places. Some people not believe so witch and warlock and it's something really real. Principles and powers are real. They're out there. Some people think it's a fear. It's no fairy tale. And a fairy tale I'm there. You understand me? At the kingdom of God. That takes manifestation that keep me while I'm here. So if you want to take your prayer life for a joke, don't take it for a joke. It's time to get serious. It's time to go to the altar and cry. It's time to rebuild the altar that has been broken. It's time to press forward. It's time to move forward. I will press toward the mark of the price of the higher calling. I give my thanks for the prayer mothers back at my home at Emmanuel Apostolic Church, Lancaster. You know, they fight for me also when I couldn't fight for myself. You understand me? It's good to have supportive system. You don't, you, don't, you can't make this by yourself. You cannot, no man is an island. No man, you can't, you can't make it on your own. This is, you need your brothers and sisters in Christ. You need people to support. You need family support. You need friends that can support you. True friends. You need, you need to be around true intercessors. I give God thanks to my prayer alert team, which all is there for me. When I have a um, fight when I was doing my master's, I have so much attack doing my master's course. Nothing when I try to the enemy, don't ease off for me. So me, me can't turn back, me can't backstab, because I know I'm dead, I'm dead. 
I have to keep moving forward. You understand me? The prayer alert team always there backing me, worrying for me. I say, you know, so I go through so and so, you have to have back it in. You have to have people that will support you in spiritual warfare. You understand me? When you're going through some struggles, you can't do it by yourself. You know, make sense to do it. You start up yourself. God that the enemy want. You want to be sorry for yourself. You know what I feel? Make me worry over one situation. It's a lie. Why do I have to go through this and you get crying, get sad? You stay in your car and you don't want to talk to nobody. You shut off your phone and you get sad and everything. And then you're gone in a depression. You, you're not nothing for going in a depression, you know? Just one thought. And then you start thinking and thinking. And you, you just slide right back into yourself and slide into depression. And the enemy start telling all kind of lies. And you believe the lies. And worse, if we struggle with low self-esteem, we start thinking less of ourselves. And you start going under, 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 under. And that's what happened to me when I was depressed. Just one thought. I'm going to just lose it. And when you have people that support you and pull it out, you can pull it out. When you start decree the word of God and say, I am the head and not the tail. I am above, not beneath. I am a lender, not a borrower. You understand me? You start decree the word of God, decree positive stuff. Listen to praise and worship that can shift your atmosphere. Any type of demon you invade in your territory, you'll know if you're at the altar. Sometimes the spirit of suicide or soup in your community, you're like, what is this feeling come from? You decree the word of God and send it out. The spirit of murder, the people that are murdering you, and they're coming to you and say, where does this come from? The spirit of murder have invaded your community. That's why you have to be the son of God. You have to, you have to be the one to stand up in your community and family. Sometimes you wonder, what you can't have no money. The poverty does stand up in your community. So you have to build an altar in your home. Any party, if you want to build in your kitchen, if you want to build in your bathroom, but you have to build your altar and shut down the demon of poverty. I say, no more luck in my community. No more luck in my family. And rip it up because it is not normal. I'll not accept poverty in my family. I'll not accept luck in my family. Sometimes on marriage, you just can't work. You think I just saw, you have people have council meeting with fast and pray against marriage. You have demons just sabotage marriage, left, right, and center. You wonder why marriage can't work out? Why divorce upon high? Because somebody have council meeting against marriage for your marriage, mash up, you know, for work. You have to go up on fast and pray and rip up the devil and identify, say, are you? I mean, no, say you. I shut down the demons that sabotage marriage. My 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 parents are, my forefathers' marriage never worked. Me say, my, it, it will work. You understand me? All of a sudden, you realize that some women can't have, you can't have children. The spirit of barrenness that stand up in your family. You call it demons that it is a demon of barrenness. I come on it to leave my family and leave the woman in my family. You have to stand up. You know, so the scripture say, we Put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in our places. I am not taking anything lightly this season. Because I know say you. I know say that the spirit that invade my family may send it out. You know why? You have to go in a fasting and prayer and the word to stand up against this spirit. Them not ramp with we, so we not ramp with you neither. Just like how soldiers put themselves together for battle in the real world, you better get it in the spirit world. Get yourself in order. Get back your altar. Build the altar that has, that has been broken. It's time for the devil to stop a party in our family. Some sickness just won't come up in your family. Cancer just to kill off everybody. Oh, what's up? We don't want a cancer in our family. If you don't stand against a demon of cancer, it's going to invade the family and go in your generation. It will not go in my generation. You have to take a stance. You now go upon my children. You now go upon my children. It stops right here. I'm going to finish my degree. Your, your other family members can't done degree. Every time I then reach a C sec, it's done. As soon as they go to high school and drop out. You now go happen to it. You have to take a stand and say, I will finish my master's. I may not pay my student loan neither. I, I, I regret the dear tech student loan. It's because I never understand spiritual warfare. I know so I can go in the realm of the spirit and take down finances and take it for myself. I would have never borrowed a student loan. Student loan coming like a coming like a pest. Student loan coming like a I don't know if it describes student loan right now. I'm going to care who I'm here. Student loans like I distress the children, distress the students. You know how many requests I get with student loan students want to commit suicide because of student loan? People want to kill themselves because student loan has sabotage people. Enough is enough. Your children are not born no student loan. They're going to get scholarship. As a matter of fact, people are going to see their name and just want to give them money. And that you have to decree over your family. Enough is enough. 
student loan has sabotaged so many prayers. I've been praying for, even though I am paying back student loan, I've been praying for so many other students who want to kill themselves because of them, them stress out, them depressed because of student loan. I stress out people pitting it. I don't know sir, from the day we borrow student loan because we never have it. And yet we are paid double, we are paid um, more arrears and I stress out people poor pitney. You understand me? So in this season, you have to take a stand. You understand me? I break the generational curse. It happened back then, but it now happened to my family. And I'm, I'm done. Be done. Me not have no argument with the devil. Enough is enough. You know, someone of our youth department gets stagnant because the other youth president didn't do well and the other one before. It now gonna be better. You are the youth president, and you have to stand up and make the change. When you go into your church, and you have to make a shift in your church. If I have to go up on some days of fasting, I say, Pastor, may I beg a please if we can go up on some days of fasting with, me, with, the, with the young people then. Because something must break in the youth department. Something must break in the community. Every time I'm in a church, backsiders can't sit down and go back through the door. No! We not accept it. Backsiders must run, come back at the altar. Backsiders are not supposed to be comfortable in the season. Yeah. If you don't repent, you don't go to hell. And you're done. And that way I tried this season. When I accept no crap this season, if you don't repent, you're going straight mm. to hell. And me now go through hell on earth and go back to hell. No way. And that's why we come on midday, midnight, 6 a.m. You think that because we lock up on social media and because we want to see one soul baptized in Jesus' name. We want to see somebody repent and cry out to God, see me here. I want to come back to you. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to leave my brother and sister behind. I want to see everybody make it. We won't go to heaven. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Everybody is under the kingdom of God. We don't want to see my brother and sister left behind. I don't want to see my brother on the street as the go to hand me gun and tell him about Christ. I don't want to see my sister out there that's pregnant to have four or five, six baby, and now I come back in the church. I want them to come back in the church. I don't want to see my brother and mother off in a, in a mental state and come back. I don't want to stop praying till the mental state come back. I have a brother I have to war for every day. I'm not stop till my brother come back around. That's why I'm here. You understand me? But there because I want to see people push forward. I want to see change break. I want to see healing. I take manifestation. Oh, every time you hear somebody say, back in the days, um, healing used to take. What happened now? The same God just said that the same God today. There's something wrong with you. God still a move. Healing still a take place. But right now, may I get testimony where persons are getting their breakthrough. You understand me? People are getting healing the same way. God still a move right now. You understand me? Dead still a raise. Certain situation happen, you know, come to pass because God know why. You leave it in the hands of God. But don't say God now move or back in the days God move and God now move now. God the same. God yesterday, today, and forever. You understand me? We are the generation that is going to take a stand. If other generation don't want to take the stand, we are take the stand today. That we rest not against flesh and blood, but against principles, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Nobody's going to pull down our generation in this season. Our season will soar. Our generation will soar. Our children, children will soar in the name of Jesus. They will be great men and women of God. In the name of Jesus, we are the world changers. We are the generational shifters in this season. And we're going to walk into that authority and do what the Lord assigned us to do. You understand me? You don't care what people want to say because people have last say. When judgment day come, you and God. When death come, are you gone? When judgment day come, are you and God? And are you and what people say? And are you and pastor? And are you and your husband? And are you and your, your mother and your father? Are you and God? So you have to know where you stand. You have to know what are you deciding to do. What step are you going to take forward to come out of yourself and come out of your comfort zone and tap into the presence of the Lord. You might go other places and you not feel the presence. Are you for carry the presence of the Lord in the place? Are you for be the ark of the covenant? Are you for be the, 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 um, the son of God that shit your workplace? If your workplace dark, you will bring the light. If you go in a community and appear darkness are going, you bring the light and build it out and shut it down. God, God anointed you to be in that community. God anointed you to be in that church. God anointed you to be in that school. You made you be you you take the change. You you made the shift in your in your school. You understand me? But God is charging us today. But those who are hearing now, who will hear after this video, you be the generational shifter in your generation. You may feel discouraged, you may feel down, but just you know, shake off yourself. Take another step. Take, your, take yourself and grip up yourself again. 
And I said, God, I'm going to take a stand against the fairy dust of the enemy. I might lose some friends. I might lose my job. I might lose my career. I might lose something. But if I put my trust in God, he will take me through. You might be waiting for some stuff for a long time. Me, I wait for some stuff right now. I'll know it'll come to pass. But oh, God still deserves the glory. Him deserve the honor. Me alive. Me a well. Him know why him not make it come to pass yet. Me still a go wait at the altar. Me still a go wait at the feet of Jesus. Me still a go pursue prayer. Me still a go pursue the word of God. But God must get the glory. Today is November 8th. There's a new beginning. The Holy Ghost stop me right here and I'll stop. It's time to build their altar. It's time to put on the whole arm of God. You can't leave out no part of you. Or the enemy wipe you out. And you're afraid of none of you. You understand me? As you look on the social media, look on the news. You know, if you look and say, the enemy operate, him operate everywhere. But what we're going to do, we want to stay focused and make sure it's about soul, all right. So I'm going to close off at this time. I welcome those who are on Facebook and those who are on, those who are on um, Instagram. I pray somebody was encouraged today. It's time to take a stand in our generation. And we were on Ephesians chapter 8. As we were on the topic, put on the whole armor of God. We rest not against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wickedness in high places is no fairy tale, it is real people. So after you stay at the altar, what do you do to prepare yourself for buckle? Listen to what God is saying. You need the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, me can't, me can't, you can't text me right now, we'll pray for you. If you're not in a church for God, you can't text me right now, I will link you to a church. There, 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 there's no distance in prayer and easy to locate church right now. We have Google Map. We have everything for putting on God's church. If you're a boxer and you're afraid to go back to church, we can encourage you. We can, you can inbox me in, in, in my Facebook Messenger and my Instagram Messenger. If you're not a Holy Ghost, you need it. We're calling all to repentance. If you have walked away from your ministry, God can restore you. If you feel down and out and give up on your dreams of going back to school, he's going to prepare the way for you. If you have given up on church, he will prepare the way for you. You understand me? You know, see no way out. You have been hurt because of relationship. He's going to restore you. You understand me? He's here to heal every hurt and every pain. God bless you, Sharisa Essips, for joining in. Janice Watson. God bless you, Sir Kerry Williams, my regional president for Emmanuel. God bless you, Rosemary. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Sister Shakira, for your input today. God bless you, Angela. Claim your healing. I'm about to close out everyone. And you can share somebody else what I've spoken on today. We continue to pray and fast and read the word in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your ship, Lord. Thank you for your breakthrough at this time, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for encouraging somebody to take a stand against the fairy dust of the enemy. We're not afraid of the terror by night and by day. Whatever the enemy is for evil, turn it around for good at this time, Lord. Shift somebody in their workplace at this time. Fight for somebody on the job at this time. The enemy has been laughing and the enemy has been having a party in somebody's workplace, but we we'll shut them down today. In the name, every witch, every sorcerer, every witchcraft worker, every liar spirit, every jealous demon, bad man spirit, haters, any pity workers, will shut you down today. In the name of Jesus, we we'll send angel into the workplace at this time. We'll tear down every stronghold. Every spiritual wickedness in that place, in the workplace, will tear it up. In the name of Jesus, release somebody's finances at this time. Somebody's salary has been cut, but what they can declare multiplication of their salaries at this time, Lord. In the name of Jesus, some person have been getting small amount of pay, which we really don't deserve, but God have asked us to breathe upon the salary and multiply it at this time. Some person have financial debts at this time, Lord, but God have asked me to wipe out some debts today. That person will testify about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Some person have been discouraged or drop out of university, drop out of high school, drop out to college because of financial issues at this time, issues in the tissues because of generational curses that would decree that they'll not finish college. Well, bang that in the name of Jesus. You'll finish college. You'll finish university. You'll finish your CSEC. You'll finish your CAP. You'll finish your master's. You'll finish your bachelor's degree. You'll finish your PhD. In the name of Jesus, and you'll not bar any loan. In the name of Jesus, release scholarships for your people at this time, Lord. Release financial breakthrough at this time, Lord. Even those who owe student loan because they didn't know better, Lord. Pay off their bills right now in the name of Jesus. Send help. Some students can't even talk right now. Why they're so depressed because of what student loan is doing to them. But send help, Lord. In the name of Jesus, some persons can't get any job. They have sent application over and over and over and no answer. They are stressed out. They are depressed. 
favor them right now in the name of Jesus. Some person is getting fight on the job. They're supposed to get a promotion gun and the devil just stand up in a some manager. We will bind every demons operating behind managers and supervisors in the name of Jesus. We shut it down today. Lord Jesus, spiritual wicked in thy places, we seal. We shut it down today. In the, name of, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of distress and anxiety disorder, we shut it down. Bipolar disorder, we shut it down. Schizophrenia, we shut it down. Depression, we come against it. Suicide, we light you with the fire of God. So many young people are depressed right now. We we'll bind depression. Stop sabotaging our men with lies. Stop sabotaging our teenagers, our children with lies. Stop sabotaging our youths and our singles at the same sabotaging them lord with low self-esteem we shut it down with people saying negative words against them we shut it down every evil word that you've spoken against our generation i like to with the fire of god in the name of jesus loose our minds from negative words loose our mind from the mouth of people loose all our minds at this time from sabotage of the enemy every arrest will come against him trying to sabotage and cloud our mind. We're buying every spirit, clothing the minds of people. Can't focus for study. Every type of learning disability, we shut it down today. We're sending angels into the psychiatric or like just ward and pull out some people's mind from destruction, from lies, in the name of Jesus, from witchcraft spell, from, from obvious spell, in the name of Jesus, from some demonic decree, from blood sacrifice, I shut it down today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every spiritual wickedness in our places is attacking the minds of people, eating from the streets, eating from the garbage bin, I shut down that spirit. That mad spirit, that lunatic spirit, I shut you down today, stressing and oppressing people because of your stupid operation. I shut you down in the name of Jesus. Every demonic policy and laws, I shut it down with the fire of God. I cut it with the sword of God today in the name of Jesus. Or people not be stressed out, they'll not be depressed. Any type of system that go against God's system, we we'll light it with the fire of God. We we'll expose it today. We we'll shut you down in the name of Jesus. Demons taking a stroll, having a party, laughing after the people of God. We're taking a stand today to stop it in the name of jesus demon it counts against our marriage i shut you down i see you from afar I want to destroy young marriages but shut you down in the name of jesus I want to destroy old marriages I want to destroy marriage a ban the demon of divorce and separation every evil counts against our singles saying they can't find a husband or a wife and you have made a decree that they'll not find any i said angels for cut it up today in the name of Jesus, our singles will find their spouse their husbands will find their wives their wives will find their husband I ban every type of gender issue today. I shut it down. Every homosexual demon, I light to the fire of God. Every lesbian spirit that wants to stun up in people today, we shut it down. In the name of Jesus, every type of sexual promiscuity, we shut it down today. In the name of Jesus, every sex demon that wants to attack our children today, I cut to with the fire of God. In the name of Jesus, loose our youth today from stronghold of fornication. Loose our, our youth at this time from the spirit of Jezebel. I shut it down. Your demon of fornication, I come against you. Your demon of adultery will come against you your demon at this time of lust will light you with the fire of god blinding our teenagers blinding at this time our young people a band the spirit at this time of prostitution that want to take over our young people both in the church and both in the world i shut you down in the name of jesus our young girls will be women of god is there any, there'll be no prostitute or shut it down then i sell out themselves the blood of jesus again sell out to them Step into their situation, touch their mind to say no to the offer in the name of Jesus. I will pull in on somebody today in the name of Jesus. They'll take a stand against the fairy dust of the enemy that was sent to wipe out our generation. You'll not have our generation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stop looking on the computer in the name of Jesus and, and we're taking on bad things. We'll shut it down today. In the name of Jesus, spirit of pornography, I come against uh, attacking our boys, attacking them in the bathroom, attacking them on the streets, attacking them on the computers, attacking them on the phone. Every spirit operating behind these computer devices to pull them into pornography, I shut you down. Your idolatrous spirit, I come against you today. I will take a stand against pornography. We get us, we take a stand against masturbation. Loose our youths and our children, our boys and girls from masturbation. I loose our youths from rape. Every demon of rape lurking around to take out our girls and our boys, I shut it down. Demon of kidnapping, demon of selling out at the same, I will shut it down in the name of Jesus. Cover a generation, the name of Jesus. Spirit of abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse. Verbal, verbal abuse, emotional abuse, intellectual abuse, every type of abuse will shut it down today. In the name of Jesus, sit and pass on some cases that is in a file that persons are sweeping over and putting it under a carpet, expose it today. Those have been sabotaged at the workplace at this time. 
Managers want to rape other workers. Managers want to seduce other workers. I shut down that spirit today. Loose our young people from strongholds today. Today we're breaking every chains today. Touch down into every family. Send the angels in every home. Every demon invades and wants to step in our homes. So that we shut it down today. In the name of Jesus, tear up every plastered enemy. A family that prays together, stays together. We we'll command unity in families. You know what? When you invade family, what you do? You destroy the church. And that's what you do. But we we'll shut it down today. Cover every family. Cover every marriage. Cover every single, cover every daughter and every son. Cover our cousins, our aunties, our uncles, our grand aunts, our grandmother, our grandfathers today. In the name of Jesus, cover them on their blood. Sit up on families today. I thank you for the peace that passes our all understanding. We disrupt every moves of darkness today. We disrupt you today. We shut it down today. Every demonic code will come against you. Every demonic signal. Every tracking demon will shut it down at this time. We take a foothold on the enemy today. We shut it down today. In the name of Jesus. Anything you want to destroy today, it is exposed. We're not accepting lies. We're not accepting no deception today. We're not accept nothing of you today. I declare and declare that no weapon form against the people will not work, will not prosper. Those who are struggling with sickness today, touch them into the hospitals. Touch them from some nurses and some doctors who are stressed out. Send help. What the doctors and the nurses can do, send help. What our teachers and our principals can't do, send help. Shut down every demonic invasion in schools, from primary school, high schools, elementary school, early childhood, college, universities at this time. Any demonic lecture operating against our students so for them not to pass the exam, we shut you down. In the name of Jesus, cover every student, cover every college grad at this time, Lord. Even they leave college and university, them job already before them graduate. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Bless your people today. Bless your intercessors. Bless your warriors. Bless our children today. Bless some testimonies. Lose some testimonies today. Lose some confirmation today. Lose some altars today. That will rebuild our altars and go back to the foundation of prayer, fasting, and the word. That is what is going to keep our generation at this time. We can do so many other activities. But the foundation of prayer will preserve our generation. That is what kept me. That is what kept many of us through the years that we're still standing. We're still holding on. Some of our young people are going to some deep issue. They're afraid to talk about it, but God and Maxime touch them. Some young adults are afraid to talk about their issue, but touch at this time. Some marriage couples are afraid to talk about their issue, but touch down into some couples today. Some parents are afraid to disclose what they're going through because they're afraid of what the public might say. Lord, I actually touched on into their case today. Thank you for the victory report. Thank you for the testimony. Thank you for flipping the script today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I pray everybody have a blessed day. Thank you for joining in. We continue to pray in the name of Jesus. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. Just remember to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This is the time for our generation to take a stand. In the name of Jesus, we will stand. A bit what we're going through, despite of our disappointments, despite of the destruction of the enemy, our generation will take a stand against the fiery darts of the enemy. We were reminded today to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the fiery darts of the enemy. Put on the whole armor of God for this week. Don't leave nothing out. You have to have on everything. In Ephesians, we were in Ephesians chapter 6. So let's review when you're at home. Rebuild your altar that has been broken. We might be described, but rebuild your altar. So it's time for you to put on the loins, girt with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. It's time for you to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's time for us to have the shield of faith. It's time for us to have the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and praying always with all prayer and supplication. So you want us to pray in season, out of season, pray online, offline, in your prayer closet, when you're in the train, when you're in the taxi, when you're in the bus, when you, when, you know, you want you to have a, a, a prayer. Your prayer is supposed to be like a lifestyle. It's your new culture now. Prayer is your culture. Prayer is your lifestyle. It doesn't just want you to pray when you want something from him. But he wants a relationship. That's like what, you, like what you talk with your husband or your wife or your bestie, your best friend. That's like what you talk with your mom and your dad. He wants you to have a personal relationship with him. That I may know him. He wants, it to, he wants, he wants to know you. In Philippians um, 3 verse 10 that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So the same resurrected power resurrect Jesus from the dead and the same power live within us. And for those who don't have the Holy Ghost, he's ready to download that same resurrected power in you. 
For those who are backslidden, he wants to revive that resurrected power in you. For those who feel like giving up on this Christian journey, he wants to download this fire in you one more time. It's there. You just want to restore it and just find the fire and you come up, come back ablaze. You're not too far from God that you can restore it. You can't be depressed that he can pull you back up. You can't backslide so far that he can't get back to you. He's always there waiting on you. Doesn't matter, no, no matter where the last night, no matter what sin you commit, God is ready to forgive you. All right, so I pray everybody have a powerful day. November 8th is a new beginning. Thank you so much for joining in. God bless you, Natalie Golden. The Holy Ghost stop me now. <laughs> Be encouraged. It's a um, golden. God bless you. For those who are on Facebook, God bless you, Sean Nicole. Thanks for coming on. I pray everybody have a blessed day. Continue to keep myself, my husband, and daughter in prayers. Continue to pray for the vessels, God will mean well. Continue to pray for the prayer alert ministry because we mean well. Continue to pray for a generation because our generation will take a stand because we mean well. We want to serve God. We want to go to heaven. We just need people to encourage us, true, anointed, godly men and women to encourage us, this generation, to move forward. God bless Carisha Gale. God bless Shauna Cole. It is well. God bless you, Shauna Chantel Kid Powell. Thanks for joining in. It is well. Tell yourself today, everyone, that it is well. God bless you, Janice Watson. God bless you, Sharice. God bless you, Sister Carrie William. It is well. God bless you, Sharika Enceps. It is well. God bless you, Angela Carty. Please message me if you have felt better. I declare healing and breakthrough. But those who do have the Holy Ghost, inbox me. We'll pray for you. But those who have not been saved and don't know Christ as yet, you can inbox me. If you want to be saved and be full of the Holy Ghost, you can message me. If you'd like to go to a church, you can message me. Type everybody, it is well. Yes, Nikisa, say it is well. Thanks for joining in the um, Nikes Daily. Thanks for joining in Just Missy Berry. Thanks for joining in MZ Monique. Thank you for joining in, Sister Shakira Duncan. Thank you for your support. Thank you for coming on and giving your word of encouragement. Yes, we cut off all your light in Jesus' name. God bless you, Esther James. Thanks for joining in. God bless you, JMJ Goodman. Thanks for joining in, everyone. Type everyone that it is well. God bless you, Cams James. God bless you, everyone. God bless you so much. God bless you. I'm scrolling through Chantel. Thanks for joining in. God bless you. Type everyone that it is well. Tell yourself today it is well. It is well. It is well. Just Lando, thank you so much for coming on. Type that it is well, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Nikisa. Yes. Yes, same thing. Psychology, psychiatry is going to help me. Same encounter with witches and warlocks. Should have been mad already. Yes, all of us. That the devil is the one. You don't mad me, but it is well. God bless you, everyone, for joining in. Sashi Poo, thanks for joining in. Yes, it is well. It is well, everyone. It is well. It is well. It is well. Have a blessed day. And you can share somebody the word today. We continue to pray. We'll continue to pray midnight and midday. You know, if you would like us to pray, sometimes we pray offline on Zoom, midnight. And um, we try our best to consistently pray six every morning. Uh, that's when I can't get a lot of persons because some are at work and school. So we pray six o'clock in the morning as often as we can on Zoom. If you like the link, you can inbox me. And midday, we'll try to maintain midday as long as we're available. Right? So you can inbox if you'd like to join with us to pray at times. And tonight we're having a social with Sister Alicia. We're on the book Soar. We're, and we're, we empower each other to soar to your goals. Um, I'll send it, I will post it on my Instagram and my Facebook. So we we'll try every Tuesday recently to have a social at nine o'clock because we realize that after we have prayed and you know, many of us go to church, we pray and so on. Persons need follow up, and sometimes we want to talk about our issues and we we'll advise each other and pray for each other. You understand me? Because everybody's going through. Yes, so we'll continue to pray. And on Thursdays at six o'clock in the morning, we pray with Evangelist Denai with Woman Empowerment. So I pray everybody have a blessed day. Any information you need, they can inbox me. You're free to do so. Have a blessed day.